Hello, YouTube friends. This is Richard Maybe with Richard Maybe Presents, uh, still homebound. And uh, it looks like for the rest of this week, at least, at the very least, they will still have my car. <laughs> they got, so um, there's a uh, something with the computer, the motherboard, and the motherboard has to re be replaced and it's going to be big money. So um, the component part of the computer, the motherboard, or and the left hand is smoke shifter and the gizmo and the everything else was shipped to Miami to this place. And so, so at any rate, it's going to be another, at least another week. So homebound for another week. Um, been getting groceries through Kroger. They're very good. Um, oh, I you know you know um, I'm not a big league guy. You know I'm not I'm not in with the big leagues. I'm not in with the the uh, I'm not a, I'm not necessarily a contender on the uh, YouTube scene, but I have like this. You know, relatively small circle of supporters with comments and that kind of thing and the likes and that sort of thing. And I really appreciate that. Um, it's, <laughs> it's tough to do this, especially if you're homebound, you know. You know, um, how many times can you walk to the mailbox? <laughs> so I, I wanted to talk today about uh, continuing thinking about fate and uh, destiny and outside influences on your life for the good and for the bad. And uh, when I was in my early 30s, and it was in the early 80s, um, I owned my own newspaper, the Lincoln Park Journal. It was a weekly newspaper. The first 13 issues are in the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. And if you put in um, in Google or Yahoo search, uh, put Richard Maybe Jr., M-A-B-E-Y, Richard Maybe Jr., space, or Richard space, maybe, space, Jr., space, Lincoln Park Journal. Uh, it's about the fourth or fifth item that shows the Library of Congress that the first 13 issues made the Library of Congress. Now, if you hit the image button, it'll it, you can call up some of the, you know, some of the old issues of Lincoln Park Journal that I published. So anyway, one of my mainstays is that talking about outside influences, outer influences, um, circumstances, outer, outer, outer influences. And, um, what am I main at? Lincoln Park, New Jersey, in the 80s, seven square mile town. Um, at that point, a population of about 8,000 people. It was just before they built all the, the, the condominiums on the farmlands and the apartments and the, uh, what do they call them? McMansions. And there was a lot of farms and wooded area. And then... In the late 80s, they did a lot of building, and the population took a big jump. But in the early 80s, still about 7,000 people, seven square mile town. Uh, two rivers, the Passaic River and the Pumpton River. Also, the Pumpton River is also known as the Pequotic River. So this, and it's, it, Lincoln Park is in the shadow of Hook Mountain. So uh, it's in the valley. So one of the biggest businesses in Lincoln Park was the Chevrolet dealer in the center of town. And they usually took out a, at least a one full page ad and sometimes two page full page ads. And that was my, um, what do they call that? Bread and butter. That, pay, that essentially paid for the printing costs of the, of the paper. And then the smaller ads, the hardware store, the sweet shop, 
the greeting card store, the bakery. That was for sundry expenses, miscellaneous expenses, and, and basically my salary. <laughs> it wasn't that much, though. So anyway, um, I had heard rumors that the Chevrolet dealer, uh, this is a full-blown Chevrolet dealer. I mean, they sold new cars. It just wasn't used cars. It was, they also sold new, car, new, new cars. So anyway, a rumor was around town that the Chevrolet dealer was going to put all their advertising dollars into cable TV. And the um, one of the things was like uh, the owner or the sales manager, they were going to put their children on the, you know, buy a car, buy a, buy a car from us. Yeah, yeah, buy a car, buy a car at the Chevy dealer, you know. <laughs> Little kids, like, you know, eight or nine years old, you know, in the commercial. So that was helping out. So anyway, um, Lincoln Park Journal used to come out on uh, Wednesday morning. And on Monday, I used to go get my ads for to go to the, no, Friday. Friday, Friday, I used to go for the ads for the next week's edition. For the next, for this Friday, for the upcoming Wednesday's edition. So it was a Friday about 10 o'clock in the morning. And outside the sales manager's office, and they all had uh, like those plexiglass offices, like uh, the old TV show, Lou Grant, you know, the, these offices you could see inside, just plexiglass or glass. I, don't, I think it was more plexiglass. Maybe it was glass. I don't know. But anyway, um, there was a bench and it was like two benches forming an L. And each bench, maybe three or four people could see, could sit on each bench waiting for a salesperson or just, uh, you know, maybe they're waiting to get their car repaired or something like that. So I'm at the bench by myself and um, waiting to see the sales manager. And the lady from the cable TV company came in. <laughs> and she's dressed to the nines early 20s, very attractive woman, uh, very pretty woman. And uh, so the five or six uh, salesmen, uh, all, pretty much the whole staff, all the salespeople were men and different ages. <laughs> and it was like, it was like when the, the man, when Barbara Eden came to Mayberry to be a manicurist in Floyd's barbershop. You know, all the guys pop up, run to the door to open the door for her. And uh, then, then you know, they can't do enough. You know, they're running to get her a little soda and, uh, you know, whatever she wants and blah, 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 you know. And uh, at that moment in time, at that moment in time, I knew I had lost the Chevrolet dealer as an advertiser. So she asked one of the salespeople to talk to the sales manager about this upcoming ad campaign that's going to be on, you know, 30 second ads. They're going to be put on different cable TV stations, interdispersed. And so anyway, one of the fellows goes to the door, knocks on the door, and uh, you can see in the plexiglass, he's just at his desk doing some work or pretending to do some work, <laughs> pretending to do something. <laughs> and he says, oh, yeah, let her come in. You know, and, I, and I'm next. You know, hey, what's going on? So she, uh, he, says, oh, he says, oh, wait a minute, I'll be. So she sits down in the L. And I'm facing the side, one of the sides of the car dealership looking at all the they got two or three cars inside the uh, the dealership and then she was facing his office and um, you know she's dressed in this you know she's got a, the dress on and 
the third button unbuttoned. And I, I, I mean, you know, so I will never forget this moment. She looks at me and I've got all my Lincoln Park Journal, my little attache case, I have my uh, Lincoln Park Journal material uh, I'm holding on to. And she says, oh, are you with the local paper? The, 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 and she's, of course she's getting the dig in. Oh, you're with the little, there's another saying, you're with the Lincoln Park Journal or you, oh, you're with that little Lincoln Park Journal, you know, to get the dig in. And I said, oh yes, I'm the publisher. And we introduce each other. I forget what her name is. I was like, Jane. Well, she gave me a look. And it was a very, with the look was a phony smile. With her eyes, she shouted, roared with her eyes. I win, you lose. They're going to be advertising with me, not you. And uh, sales manager came out and kind of waved at me and invited Jane into his office. Big smile on his face. So then one of the... I was sitting there for a few minutes and one of the sales reps came and he's standing up and he says, uh, Oh, um, whatever is, I'm going to make a name up, but it's not his name. The sales manager says, well, Mr. Kramer decided not to advertise in Lincoln park journal anymore. That's how, you know, this sales rep comes over. I'm sitting down, he's standing up, and he says, oh, oh, Richard, um, by the way, Mr. Kramer asked me to tell you that he's not going to be advertising with Lincoln Park Journal anymore. Well, I survived for a few months after that, but it was really tough. And I often think, you know, outside influences, outer circumstances. If the Chevrolet dealer had not gone to cable TV and continued advertising with me, how different my life would be. I mean, from there... Um, from Lincoln Park Journal, um, I worked, it was at this computer place for a short time, and I kept trying to get into a big corporation in their public relations. I finally got into the door with AT&T and their public relations. It took me about a year after I stopped publishing Lincoln Park Journal, but If the Chevrolet dealer had stayed with me, I would have just kept publishing Lincoln Park Journal. I just couldn't keep printing it in the red. So you think about fate and destiny and also those outside influences. I mean, that cable TV, that lady selling the... Uh, time spots for cable T was definitely an outside influence that deeply affected my life. Strange. It's just strange how you never know. Well, I'm going to close. I thank all of the people who have offered out support. 
um, give a positive feedback, comments, um, hit the like button. I really appreciate it. Subscribe. I, I really and truly appreciate it. I, I'm not a contender. I'm not one of the big boys on YouTube, but you know, I'm just one person trying to tell some stories, uh, give some insight into life, provide a little entertainment. <laughs> so I'm going to close for now. This is Richard Navy signing off. Stay safe. Stay happy. Stay positive. This is Richard signing off.